OCI means the Open Container Initiative. It's a group of people that works together to create standards for container technologies. But I know what you're thinking. In your head, you're imagining this grand council of, of these container masters that decide on these lofty rules for their dynasty and create thousand page documents called specifications that only the mighty can understand. No, 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 throw that fantasy away. Well, I'm sure that many of our maintainers are masters of their domain, one or more domains, everyone here is a human. You don't need to be afraid and, and feeling like you don't have the expertise to participate. Now that we have an understanding of containers, and we also have a sort of sense of the goals that these containers aim to solve, let's look a little more closely at OCI, the Open Container Initiative. Now, in order to achieve the goals of reproducibility, continuous integration, and flexibility that we just talked about, we need to define a standard set of formats and interactions. Whoa, I know what you're thinking. Not the 15th, not the 16th standard. We don't want another one of those. But I can assure you that this particular initiative for standardization has been relatively successful thus far. Uh, and so instead of, you know what, let, let's not call them standards. That's like a really scary term. And, and let's not even call them specifications. Let's just call them projects because when push comes to shove, what each of these things comes down to is a GitHub repository that has a bunch of markdown in it that has simple rules like when you pull a container, this is the kind of interaction that you should have. This is the contents of an image manifest. It, it really comes down to things that simple. There, there's nothing abstract and kind of crazy about this. So what, what I want to do is I want to walk through these projects with you. And I want to give you a sense of the project, but I also want to talk about why it might be relevant to you. If you wanted to contribute, how might you want to contribute? So broadly, the projects fall into three categories. Runtime, meaning what happens when you execute run or otherwise interact with a container. Images, for example, what kinds of metadata should we be concerned about keeping to describe our containers? And then distribution. If I have a, a registry that distributes images, what, how does that work? What does it look like? Someone give me a sense here. So let's talk about these things one by one, starting with the image manifest. So what do, you, what do you think of when you think of a manifest? I totally bet you that you're thinking of some kind of document of cargo in a ship. Well, we packed our mongos and looks like the, the pie has made it okay. Well, <laughs> that's actually, that's the definition sort of of one kind of manifest, but it's a really perfect analogy for containers too. An image manifest can be thought of as a similar document that describes the guts of an image. Now, since these manifests are served usually via RESTful APIs, if you see one out in the wild or an example in one of these GitHub repos, you're gonna see a JSON blob. Now, what do we find in the blob? That's the standard part. We find properties of the container that are important like what layers of content make up the image? Are there any annotations for the image? What are the unique identifiers for the image in all of those layer, layers so that if you do assemble the image into a container, you can validate that these are the layers that you seek. So next, let's jump into the distribution specification. The distribution specification broadly describes an API that would be used by a registry to distribute images, but the registry really is concerned with the interactions with this API. For example, how do you pull an image? How do you push an image? How does authentication work? How are the images named? How do you, how do you, is, is there a search or a catalog or is that point turned off? How are errors presented? Are there errors that aren't presented? Finally, the runtime specification. 
Some would argue that the runtime specification is the most important out of all of these. It's another kind of interaction, but this time it's with the container binary itself. It means the execution environment, the configuration, and the life cycle of your container. So what, what, what do I mean by execution environment? Well, we kind of take it for granted that I can run my container on Ubuntu, I can sometimes move it to a Windows machine or a Mac OS machine, I can run it there. But these are all different host operating systems. And these are actually different execution environments that come with different rules and standards for generating what has to feel like the same interaction with the container to the user. So if you look at the runtime specification page on, on the GitHub repo, you'll actually find that there is a different specification file for each base operating system. Finally, the last uh, sort of related to the runtime specification is a project called RunC. It includes the actual code used by the container runtimes to implement the OCI specification. You can think about the runtime specification as sort of the set of rules, and then RunC is the actual implementation of those rules. And you're going to find this all over code bases for popular container software. Typically, whether you're a user or a developer, you're likely using one of the specifications or projects to do something and you hit a problem. Either you have a new use case, you realize there's some missing functionality, or you might just have a question that needs an answer. So here's a really good example of a missing you know, function. But you would wanna bring up this discussion on the image manifest board or on the OCI list and say, hey, you know, this specification for the image manifest isn't working fully for me. And here's this use case that I have where I really need this other content type. And can we talk about what it would take to make this happen? And it could very well be that the specification already has a broad enough definition so that you could achieve what you're looking to do. But in other cases, it may be that, oh my gosh, you know, we just haven't thought about that yet. Let's see if we can get something working. And, and the cool part about this is that that's how eventually you get, you know, incremental change in these specifications. In summary, today we talked about the image specification for describing image metadata and contents, the distribution specification to describe how we interact with a registry, and the runtime specification that says what's going on in the execution environment. Remember, all of these are just projects on GitHub and you can contribute too. And that's what we're going to talk about next time. Dinosaur out.